Oh, fantastic. Not bad for a bank holiday. <laughs> Everybody's turned up. Oh, amazing. Would you like to sit down? Are you going to ask me stand? questions? Or, yeah, or, sure. Would you rather stand? I thought we could sit. Uh, well, um, I shall stand if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Shall I stand too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when are you... Uh, what's the format? So, I thought we could start with do? a few questions just from me. Uh, yeah. Chat, right. And then... Um, Open it up to the floor, really. I'm sure the right, students okay. have lots of uh, okay. engaging things to ask you. Uh, yeah, good. Okay, fantastic. So to start, obviously Glastonbury is now one of the biggest live music festivals in the world. Wait, two million people that are pre-registered now. Wow. Uh, two million? No, extraordinary. That's incredible. Uh, well, yeah, that is amazing, isn't it? Well, that's kind of sad because most of them won't be able to attend, will they? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's only one in eight, I think, yeah. come. Oh, shit. Well, yeah. Well, it's even more yeah. incredible considering yeah. that you started off at this very small Pilton Festival back in 1970. Uh, yeah, 500 people. So, kind of yeah. what inspired you to start it all off and keep it going all these years, nearly 50 years? What inspired me to do it? Yeah, to start it off and uh, keep well, going. Well, I've been... I mean, my father died when I was 19 and I tried to run the dairy farm. When I went off to sea when I was a kid, I wanted something much more glamorous than milking cows, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Which it, fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. For a young lad. So, so, so that I was at sea for about four years and my father died when I was 19, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so I had to come home and get stuck in and everything. Uh, and seven days a week milking, not much money. My father was a great preacher, but not a very good farmer. I had to pick up on the overdraft and stuff in. And, and pay off the bills and things, you know. Mm -hmm. So hard work, and seven days a week, no labour. I did it all myself, all the feeding and the milk and everything. I, I, and I suddenly fell in love with a very beautiful Glastonbury girl. And we were all well and truly loved up. And we went to the Bath Blues Festival, <coughs> which was the end of the flower power era. Yeah. And full of hippies, you know, <laughs> blokes, and all the beautiful people at the time, you know, late 60s. Sure. Early seventies, and it was very impressive actually. And and uh, we were listening to all those West Coast American bands, and Grateful Dead, and uh, Jefferson Starship, and Bob Dylan, and and even Led Zeppelin actually. Uh, 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 from our very own Midlands country, mm. non-American, I mean. <laughs> 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 and uh, and. Um, Oh, but then the Moody Blues came on, they really slept me off. They were fantastic. The Moody Blues were absolutely amazing at that time. Mm. I mean, those songs are still great now, aren't they? And um, I mean, it was all loved up with Gene. And we, uh, the whole thing was a great big love-in, really. And so I just went for it, hook, line and sinker. I mean, for what I was doing at home, you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought, oh, this is a new vision to my life here. And of course it was. And so I kicked off the very next day by finding out the Colston Hall, uh, uh, trying to book the kinks from my very first show, pound to come in, free milk. And, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Separating fun times and health. I didn't say the milk was unpasteurised or anything, but it wasn't that healthy actually, cool. but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And so my doctor tipped me off for selling the milk without, without pasteurising it, without warning people it was unpasteurised milk. And so I got into trouble there. Of course, uh, only 500 people turned up pound each, so, and so I didn't really cover the cost of it. And Mark Bolan uh, is upset. When he approached the farm, he had this great big Cadillac, wide car, wider than the lane, really, because mm. of the farm truck, and it was all covered in thorns and things. And so he had to drive this Cadillac right down through this lane and it, it was all covered in velvet. Mm. So all the thorns actually stuck onto the velvet, you see. Yeah. I met him on, on the drive when I was in charge of everything. I did security, everything. PA stuff and a little bit announcing. And, and um, he said, I'm not going down there. I said, yeah, I said, that's where the show is, you see. And so he said, what about my car? I said, well, your car's a little bit wide, but it gets wider further down. So I encouraged him down, and I was wiping the thorns off of the velvet. Mm. And I was only a farm track after all, so <laughs> it was my very first attempt, really, at promoting anything. 
and to wipe off the thorns off of Yahweh. And you get so great, he said, uh, 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 don't touch my car, man. I said, what's wrong with this chap? <laughs> He's really uptight about the whole holiday. You know, I got him on and, he, and in the end he did the most incredible set, actually, with, with T-Rex, you know. It was one of the best things, right to this day, it was one of the best things that ever happened. But I couldn't afford to pay him because there were enough people there, you see. So I first had to get him all onto the stage, and then mm -hmm. I'd tell him I couldn't pay him afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit grim, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Uh, and I said, I will pay you so much a month, you know, from the milk check, you see. So the cows actually paid for Mark Bowden, £100 a month for five months. <laughs> uh, for five months. That's incredible. So that's good, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so he's happy in the end. He let me have some of his footage for the second year. Uh, we made an album in, in, in 71. And so he gave me a track of his music for the album, which is very good of him. Mm. Uh, he was OK in the end of the day, but he wasn't very happy when he arrived. I can imagine. No, no, no. So how did you, um, and then your daughter, because she's been working with you, I suppose, in later years, how did you kind yeah, of... Yeah, she was only a baby then. Yeah. Well, I if guess... She, she wasn't even born, actually. Mm. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, much later, but much she later. She was born in 79. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so how did you kind and of... She didn't like the festival. She said, I want all these no. people gone. She said, they're all in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, when are you going away? She was terrible to them. Well, how do you manage the I was driving around the car and she's about two and a half. She said, I don't want you here on my farm, she's saying. <laughs> but she changed her mind later. Yeah. Mm. So how did you... How did I change from yeah, what? Yeah, how did you kind of respond to the changing dynamics of the festival going from essentially something uh, well, small in your home to... I, I fell in love... And I was in love with G to start with and the whole thing was... Uh, I mean, uh, 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 it's all based on that, really, to be honest with you, but... I mean, before that I was quite straight and I mean, I was going to chapel every Sunday morning, all that sort of thing, singing the choir, all that sort of thing. Uh, and so, so it quite changed in my life. Mm. But the politics fitted in with, with the anti-Vietnam war crusade going on at the time. Uh, so I loved all that. So that we, we were well into that. We formed a C&D group actually as a result of that. And, and it was a big C&D group that came out to the Trafalgar Square rallies in the 70s and 80s. Mm. Oh, Edward Thompson speaking, fantastic speaker. <coughs> uh, uh, he came to speak for me as well. Uh, um, so I could understand a lot of, a lot of the politics, I could understand the politics, because we were brought up a bit left wing and everything. <coughs> so, so it kind of fit in with that kind of thing, but I wasn't into the whole hippie thing, not myself, not really. And, and um, of hippies came by the millions, you know, and they still do. <laughs> uh, uh, and um, um, uh, I mean, it all changed actually. I mean, we uh, it went through the seventies. We we're growing a little bit all the time, you know. Uh, and in nineteen eighty-five, they closed down Stonehenge Festival because Michael Hessel's time was Minister of Defence or something. He decided that Stonehenge was a risk to the nation. He wasn't far wrong, was he? <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, so he shut it down. Uh, uh, and uh, then I was going for a licensing to magistrate Scott to get a license for the festival for my festival. And they said that I had to take in all the hippies that are on the roads and stuff, you see. Um, so it meant that, that my numbers allowed, was about 50,000, it was allowed, I mean, by the licensing authority, but I mean, the magistrates wanted me to take on all, uh, so all the waifs and strays that were in the roads and stuff. And of course, that mounted up. When Hesseldine closed down Stonehenge in 1985, there were 50,000 of those. So they all came to me, no tickets or anything. Mm. And uh, that's what made the festival work, you know, because it changed the dynamics, didn't it? Uh, and, and, um, and I was seen to be a decent bloke, so kind of by letting them onto my farm, you see. I was encouraged by the magistrates, which really helped me a lot. So I couldn't be penalised for it. You see what I mean? Yeah. And so I doubled the size of my event, and the whole mixture of stuff, it was much more interesting than what I was doing, uh, with Mark Boland and the Kings and, and a band we'd never heard of. Um, 
Yeah, but the Travellers were doing a lot more interesting show to what I was doing. So, so they had half of my farm, and I was running half of my show where people paid a fiver to come in, which covered the cost of the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? Um, um, but there were the two dimensions of the event then, and the whole hippie thing, and the Travellers, and the Muto West Company, and all those people that were so creative, who incidentally are still working for me now. I pay them a lot of money now, though, to do what they do now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't pay them anything in those days. You touched on how they cheap... They came in for nothing, anyway. You just touched on how cheap tickets were originally, like one pound, you said five pounds increase. And yeah. I think in 2015, they were closer to like 230 pounds. So do you feel that maybe the well, of the cost festivals a Well, it costs a fortune. No, I, I mean, we could charge a lot more than that. Mm. I, I charge a minimum amount of money to make... Uh, I mean... To, we actually give away two million pounds a year. So it's important to achieve that as far as I'm concerned, because I, w I hate the feel it was all s really a, s a sort of thoroughly self-indulgent, you know, mm. just a hedonistic experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, so, so I mean, it's really important to get that margin. And so give two million away every year, you know, water aid and, and, and Greenpeace and Oxfam and social housing that I do locally. Um, so that's built into the cost of the structure. Uh, um, over and beyond that, it doesn't really... I mean, it, co it covers all those things, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, um, uh, but I'm not filthy rich or anything. I mean, and um, um, I, I just enjoy what I'm doing. I enjoy the farm is very successful as well. And I it helps the farm a little bit with the rents and all that kind of thing. Uh, but I've got to rent land now from 22 other farmers, which is difficult because they all want a bit more money for the rent, you know, for the land. And, and um, uh, I mean, 46 years later, and we're still going strong. Mm. Isn't it great? Yeah, it's amazing. It's a miracle. That's just nothing short of a miracle, really, is it? Well, I think that's something that lots of people forget, that um, yeah. it is actually a working farm and that's where you live. Yeah, and it um, is a proper farm. I mean, we've been far farming cows over 155 years, you see. And the farm's really important to me and to my family and my brothers and uh, uh, all the people who are all farmers, you see. It's so really important to keep the farm going. And I, I really do love the farm anyway. And, I, uh, and we won the UK Gold Cup last year for the best dairy farm in the, in the country. So we're good at it, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and my, I've got five farmers working for me. I could choose those farmers from a head of a lot of people to choose from. That's why they're so good at it. Mm. Uh, but my son's a GP at Bath. Is he your doctor? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, uh, um, he didn't want to go farm anyway. Mm. So, so, so I can choose the farm workers that I've got now, and and, uh, and I mean that's why they're so good at it, you know. And so that's why we're winning the gold cup in the dairy industry thing. Um, that's really important to me because the festival is just huge, and uh, 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 it obviously helps everyone really. It brings a hundred million into Somerset every year in terms of trade and business, hotels and and, uh, and sales. Mm. Uh, so it's a huge earner for Somerset. Well, They're last amazing. year you expressed concerns that the current um, area might not be suitable like in the long term. Uh, well, the thing is, I've got 22 farmers to please. That's the first thing. <coughs> and we've got cows. So I've got chickens on the farm next door. Uh, they're liable to get all sorts of infectious diseases and stuff. And we might have to... I mean, on the odd occasion, I might have to move away from that site in order to overcome the, uh, uh, the health hygiene with the cattle and the chickens and things. But uh, so, so looking at Longleat for 2018 this year, <coughs> and, and um, I mean, Lord Weymouth and all that lot, who actually, actually own Longleat, are, 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 are very supportive at the moment. I mean, there's a long way to go yet, you know, mm -hmm. we're planning all the fields and all the space and all the roads and railway stations and coach parks and all, all that kind of thing. Because it's a huge, huge operation. 
in terms of trains and things like that, you know what I mean? But uh, do you not feel that? About what? It might take something well, away I don't from Glastonbury if it's not in the same place yeah, but when it's been held for so long. Uh, we're going there in a year off anyway. Mm. I take a fellow year, every fifth year you see, it. it's a fellow year anyway, so, so it won't take anything away from that, will it? As if we come back again the year after, you see. I, I do feel, though, for all, all these reasons, if I get one wobbly landowner as well, I, I, I'm actually stuffed, really. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I don't own all the land, you see. Uh, I'm only, I own less than half the land now. Mm. Uh, everybody said, well, why didn't you buy all the, all the other land? Then? But I would have been safer, but in fact, I wouldn't have felt that was the right thing to do with the money, really, quite honestly. Mm. So I didn't do it. Uh, I, I, I'm a week away two million every year. I'm at, I could have bought land with that money, you see. But, but what's the point, really? I mean, it defeats the object of the event, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yes. So I never bought the land. Uh, and so, so I'm slightly vulnerable now because it's so successful. All the farmers think, you know, they think not a gravy train, don't they? <laughs> 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 uh, uh, and um, having said that, though, they're quite long suffering, really. And, uh, and the local village has put up with me, all my staff, for, for so many years now. Because in the convoy years, when the Stonehenge people were all coming at our place in droves, they just, just went anywhere, you know, finished up in people's gardens and all sorts of stuff. Mm. And I never thought I could get through that, but I did. And it was quite horrendous, you know, socially, it was really quite a horrendous time, really, to get through all those years. Oh, well, this all died now, you see, and they're all working for me, they all get paid now um, to work for me, you know. Mm. So how are we doing? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm yeah. getting lost in the discussion <laughs> with you. Yeah. Um, so in recent years, <laughs> there's been some controversy over the selection of headline acts like Jay-Z and mm. uh, Kanye West. Because some Jay people was a great thought, move. Well, he was, but some people before thought that they didn't really go with the spirit. You only know a Gallagher. <laughs> 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 I guess he didn't agree with him then. Uh, didn't agree with him. No, oh, well, that was Emily's idea. It was a brilliant stroke that was of hers, actually. And we stuck for a headline of that year, and I thought, well, then we won't run, you see. It, and so she said, she's a gat Jay Z. I said, who? She said, Jay Z, I said, how do I pronounce it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had to phone the American agent uh, 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 and, uh, and talk him into doing it, you see. Uh, so I wanted to get the pronunciation right, didn't I? <laughs> Is it Jay Z? No, it's Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so I phoned him up and he said, well, it's not our thing. He said, we're city music people. I said, yeah, but I'm like, I got thousands of people from Manchester, from Glasgow, Liverpool, Newcastle, London, you know. Mm. He said, I thought they were all hippies from the Welsh mountains, he said. <laughs> 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 he did. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? He did his research. And, and so he said, give me a week to think about it. And, and I talked to him personally and see if we, if we could persuade him to do it, you see. And so I told him what the fee was and so, uh, all that. He said, and she said he wasn't really bothered about the fee, he wanted to know whether it was good for his career. I said, yeah, you're telling me it will be good for his career, all right. And of course it was. Mm. So at the end he agreed to do it, and, and um, there was a lot of flack, and we said, oh, Glasgow is not the same, because <coughs> you haven't got, got the Oasis type of band, or Anglo-Saxon rock and roll type of music. I thought we made a change. Uh, and it was a brilliant move, it really was. So that was her idea. Uh, and it worked at the end. It, it worked, uh, I actually sold out the day before the festival was about to happen, I sold the last ticket. Uh, uh, but we weren't settling to start with, and I thought we were going to go bankrupt. I was really worried about it. But it did work. In the end, it did work. Mm. And the press got behind it, and everybody decided it was a good idea after all. And, and that Noel Gallagher's just cried, you got it wrong, basically. Well, that trend seems to have continued because some yeah, of the people 
confirmed from this year, you know, from news falls and Coldplay to Stormzy, Skepta and Lady Lesher, it's such a wide range. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you think it's important that, I guess, as, you know, the music tastes sort of change to keep up with the, you know, kind of eclectic... Well, I've got a whole team of people booking. Yeah, you know, I've got lovely dance village people from, from Bristol. Uh, they're all into grime. You heard of grime? I have heard of grime. <laughs> Grime's very popular in Oxford right now. But you like grime, do you? I love grime. That's a very English thing, you see. It's, it's a very London thing. Too. Uh, oh, it's London thing, it is, but it's not American. No. It's not hip hop or anything. No, no it's very great. Uh, so, so we're doing a lot of grime in the dance videos, so the whole stage is getting all grime. Uh, um, um, uh, so, yeah, it's going to be good. Well, I wonder then. Are you a fan of grime? No, how, not how no. much. <laughs> not how me. much does the lineup uh, no, kind of reflect your musical taste? Although Adele did ask me herself, uh, um, uh, um, the, the year before whether she, uh, she could headline, uh, and and um, um, I'm a Van Morrison. I'm, I'm a bit out of date with all that stuff, really. I was really keen on Primal Scream, you know, and, and the, uh, but the Toyota, new car Toyota, using that moving on up. Mm. Have you heard it on, on television? I have not. I said, I can't have a good song there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's one of the best songs in the last 30 years. Uh, and so the car people have chosen it, and that's my favourite tune that is. <laughs> moving on up. Yeah, a Primal Scream? <laughs> oh, it's magic. It really was. I heard that when I was milking my cows one day. Mm. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I did, and I phoned them out straight away. I kept milking short, you know, I didn't do the wash down, so I went straight on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of get that band. Mm. He said, Well, um, he said, It costs you. I said, Yeah, well, how much? <coughs> he said, 5,000 quid. I said, My God, that's cheap. <laughs> 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 and, and, uh, and so they played that year, the Primal Scream did, but um, uh, I've been back several times since then. Um, so occasionally I'm right on with that kind of thing, but grime, I don't really know anything about the grime thing. Mm. Uh, 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 I mean, Jay-Z, I think, was quite catchy stuff. Um, and um, there's lots of English rap artists here that are very good. Mm. Yeah. Well, I read a lot in the papers recently after Prince passed away um, that there had been some efforts to get him. At well, I'm going to meet his agent actually in about a week's time. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it was all planned for dinner in London and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it didn't. That's, that's so sad. Oh, that, that's the real style that we never had, isn't it, mm. really? Are there another... And yeah, he did the hop farm, you see, for Vince Power, didn't he? Mm. I don't know how he got him to do that. <laughs> What? Are there any other sort of acts, past or present, who well, you'd love to have at Destiny Me who haven't performed yet? Well, not really. There aren't many out there, are there? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Fleetwood Mac, possibly, but oh, they're around. Uh, so many people in the band with Fleetwood Mac, there's about four managers involved, and they've all got to agree the fee and everything. Mm -hmm. It's too complicated. I've got a job to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I hope they'll be back those soon as I would, I would think they will be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my favourite act at Glastonbury was probably Beyonce in 2011. Yeah. And there are rumours that she might headline with Coldplay have been confirmed for this Well, they're year. friends, aren't know? they? They are friends, aren't they? Can but you tell us if that's no, true no, or not? No, I'm not allowed to say any of those. <laughs> There's a better rumour than that going around. Is there? I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I expected as much, but it was worth a try. Um, well, yeah, they're great buds anyway. Of all the musicians who've played over the years, then which who's well, whose funny performance enough, is your favourite? Funny enough, there was a John Martin, 1979. Have you ever heard of John Martin? I can't say that. You no. can't have not now. Oh, he is fantastic, and 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 um, he just hit the right note. 79 was perfect, mm. and he's uh, the sun was going down, you know, and oh, it was absolutely magic, it was really, really magic. Uh, um, but he died about five years ago. I don't think we'll ever get any better than that. Uh, of course, Mark Bowen in the year one was, was also sensational, 
He really was. I was stuff every year, all sorts of things going on. That's all the nightlife and stuff. You know. I'm going down through the whole farm and that. I do the Saturday night, you know, from 12 o'clock after the headliner, and go right through the whole of the nightlife myself mm. and see what's going on. And, uh, and I finish about 4.30 in the morning. Do you stay all that time? Yeah, I do, yeah. Wow. Because I like to see what they're doing with the money, you see. They cost the fortune. Uh, and, and if I don't go and see what's going on yeah. and appreciate what they're doing and everything, and also to thank them for doing what they do as well, it's very important, mm. very important. Sounds like you have a really kind of hands-on. Yeah, I really have still. to get there and see exactly what they're doing. I know exactly what everyone's doing. Mm. And Joe Rush and, and Pip Rush with Arcadia, have you heard of Arcadia? I have. Yeah. Well, they're fantastic now. And uh, um, I, I came round about to te uh, 10 years ago and said, would, would I give them the money to buy the cranes that are being thrown out of the docks as they've happened in docks because they're modernising uh, the crane system? Mm. And I said, what for? Said, well, because... The, uh, uh, and so had these amazing drawings, you know, this great spider leg thing. And they were cranes, you see. And so, so, so they wanted me to pay twelve thousand pounds for these old cranes that are coming out of the docks. I said, "What? I've never met you chaps before, you know." He said, "Yeah, but I got to buy these cranes because we can do this and do that and do the other." And and, um, and so he said, "Anyway, he said if it doesn't work, you said they're worth so much in scrap metal, okay? So you got five thousand back from the scrap. If we're complete wasters." If we fail you, mm. so you got five thousand pounds back from the scrap of the cranes, <laughs> and so I took a chance on those two boys. I gave them the twelve thousand quid they welcome and bought these cranes. And it's amazing what they do now. Arcadia, have you seen Arcadia? Yeah. Yeah. And they are a bit, a little bit big for their boots now, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get going. Up. Oh, they want more land, they want more space, they want more money, they want more fire and more this and more that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but they're two lads from Bristol. Mm. Yeah, good boys though. I trusted them, you see, I didn't know who they were. It paid off. Uh, yeah, it paid off, yeah. Great, yeah, well, does. I think I'll open it up to the floor now. Okay. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Okay, the lady right there. Hi, um, so... I'm from Somerset and I Where are you from? From Langport. Oh yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> are you on um, the temple east down there? So I went to the local school, Hewish Episcopi, and um With the Temple East? No, Hewish Episcopi. You didn't know the Temple East. Oh though. no. Oh wait. As I in like like Alice. Outside the makers. <laughs> oh no, right, no, no, no. As anyway. in Alice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as in the fashion. Yeah, yeah. She went to that school. No, she did, yeah. There's yeah. a painting of, uh, yeah. there's a painting in the IT room by her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, What's the question then? So the question is, <laughs> uh, there's, I have a couple of friends who, obviously, they, they actually, uh, they, they work um, on farms and they own farms. And I think that in the past couple of years, there's been a lot of problems with milk prices. Yeah. Um, and I guess I wanted to ask you, um, so they've been protesting a lot and it's affecting the business a lot. So I wanted to ask you, does it affect you to the same level? And do you think supermarkets are playing fair? And what can be done? Oh, the trouble is there's too much milk being produced. That's the problem, you know, mm -hmm. really. Uh, and um, uh, but some supermarkets are paying a really decent price. Uh, but then they can only buy so much of it, you see. Uh, like we're producing more and more milk. And so, th so, there's, so there's a two-tier system now. They're paying a higher price for half of it. And the bottom half of it is, is a dirt cheap. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen long term. People are going to drop out of milking, I think. And leave people like us to keep going. I, th I think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, it's not very good, but it's market forces really at play there. And, and I mean, we've got no right to turn out more and more milk and force people to buy it at high prices. But do you think, like, because Somerset is, obviously it's known for its sort of rural farms, and if a few kind of dairy players, it, I mean, if it becomes, 
if there are only a few dairy players left because they, they're, yeah, they're large enough very, to... Do I you know. think that's going to harm Somerset? It, well, it's not very really healthy, I suppose. Yeah. But the market forces, though, I think. Uh, um, if you stay in the common market, it'll help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 encouraging yeah. peop people to sign up to that. Uh, um, our only hope is really is Europe. Really, to save the small farmers, really, because they'll make sure they're looked after. They really will. Yeah, all those French farmers, you see, they're all small farmers over there. They're all Catholics, and when they die, uh, they split all the land up in it, so it gets split so many different ways. Because they've got so many children. <laughs> 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 yeah, so there's loads of small farmers there. So that they're looking after the small farmers of England as well. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Thank you. for the question. Yeah, um, a very good. I recognise the mm. chat. Hi. Um, so I've heard you're a big fan of dragons. There's even a, a 50 foot a cement dragon going through Glastonbury a Festival, cement. which you got built. Is it cement? Oh, I'm not sure. I it thought it was stone. It was stone. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're the man who yeah. built it, so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Where um, did this fascina uh, fascination with dragons come from? Because they're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're all, all over the festival, and I was wondering... Uh, no, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, um, I'm wandering down th through the nightlife. You know, the last time, last year, from 12 o'clock, I started the underground piano bar right at the top that I told you about earlier, uh, uh, where the Dubliners are playing in there, and I joined them for a few songs and things. And, uh, and coming down through... There was a clay dragon that's firing purple flames, flames from its mouth. And he said, Miss Fee, would you like a cup of tea? I said, what? <laughs> and he's boiling a kettle full of water from the flames of this dragon. It's an amazing sight. <laughs> uh, I'm at two in the morning, and it's really good tea as well. <laughs> uh, that's the best dragon I've ever seen. <laughs> and I've got a big dragon as well that the kids play on and everything. Yeah. And the water's running through. But, but Chuck called Ray Brooks built that from Norfolk. Uh, and Ray is an incredible sculptor, actually. Uh, we don't like the festival, though. Because <laughs> he doesn't like crowds of people. Uh, we come and stay, and, and she stays on the farm just before the festival for about a month. Uh, and he services the dragon. He gives it a 30,000 hour service or something. And make sure it's not leaking and the water's going through it and everything all right. And no, I'm not bothered about dragons, actually. Not really. Oh, you're not a big fan? I'm not a really a fan of dragons. How no. did so how many did <laughs> 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 How did what? so many end up in, in the farm, then? That just people wanted to build dragons in? And there's only one. There's a couple, I think. <laughs> 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 well, there's a tea-making one. Yeah. Yeah, that's only temporary. That made out of clay, that oh, was. Okay. Oh, that was a beautiful sight. That was at two in the morning. That was amazing. <laughs> a lot of purple flames coming out of his mouth, you know, and the kettle s sort of propped up on a tripod. And oh, it's fantastic. Uh, and what people uh, I just come up with you know, in the middle of the night. And no, I'm not worried about dragons. I think although the Somerset motif is a dragon, funny enough, on the Somerset flag, and of course the Welsh. A dragons of Wales as well, and and we get loads of support from the Welsh. You know, super furry animals and manic street preachers and stereophonics, and, uh, and they're all out there, aren't they? What's your favourite Welsh band? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put me on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> Have I? My dad's a very big fan of stereophonics. I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't know what's happened to them lately, though. We've kind of. I think super furries are probably the best one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much for the question. No, no worries. <laughs> so, so I couldn't answer any better than that. Yeah. Next question. Uh, live, mm. somebody just there. Hiya. Uh, can I ask what you think about, uh, about digital music? Uh, do you listen to music digitally? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's harmed artists or helped them? Oh, it's not really my subject, you know, really. Uh, um, I, mean, I prefer albums, actually, to be honest with you. Uh, um, I've got thousands of records and there were albums and things but um, um and i don't understand what the difference is actually 
Radio 1 and Radio 2 are all digital, aren't they? And is that any better then? Is that any better than it was? Uh, well, what I meant was things like streaming, the fact that we can now listen to so much music uh, oh, instantly on right, our computers, things like that. Yeah, it's not really my subject, but um, um, uh, the fact that they're getting it cheap, you mean, do you? Uh, because they pay so much, don't they, to get it off the website. Uh, uh, and so, so record sales have gone down, haven't they? So I think that's a bad thing, isn't it? Uh, but Adele wouldn't go down that road, would she? And some people don't, do they? Um, uh, and they don't make it available. Uh, it's not really my subject, to be honest with you. I just buy albums. The bigger the albums are, the better I like them. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I've got old-fashioned record players and everything with the styluses on. Have you heard of that? <laughs> 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 uh, well it's better sound, you know. Uh, the stylus and some lovely big speakers there. Yeah, I can't beat it. Thank you for that question. Yeah. Um, the gentleman with glasses just in the room behind. Uh, hi, thanks for coming. Um, I was just wondering with your charitable endeavours and the Billy Bragg uh, left field, I was just wondering um, when you realised that the festival had hit such a stage um, and, and such a size that you could actually try to make a difference with it and make a statement. Well, we've always, I mean, we've always been involved with the CND argument, for instance. We've been campaigning all the way through, actually. That we run the biggest green field where we've been generating electric with wind and all that, all that stuff. We were, I really the forerunners of all, uh, really of all that stuff. That hasn't changed through the years, has it? Um, but but to Billy Bragg's uh, um, um, left field efforts are fantastic. You know, we, we and Tony Benham was there year after year after year, and and um, and Jeremy Corbyn's coming this year to talk about Trident specifically, not Labour Party politics, but about Trident and the whole anti-nuclear argument there. Uh, and Charlotte Church com comes every year too. She, she's wonderful, Charlotte, isn't she? When she sang all, those all the lovely songs when she's a little girl. And, uh, but she's really heavy now, mind. <laughs> she's really campaigning for, for, for independence of Wales and all sorts. But um, uh, uh, but she's a great talker, and does encourage a lot of people on that stage there. And uh, Bill's done a wonderful job. Although we started that before Bill did it, but um, asked him if he'd actually take it on for us. Uh, it's a great element, really, to the festival that had that political strand, isn't it? And and that debate, really social debates, are going on there all the time. It's a really great. Uh, <coughs> it gives a little bit of heart and soul to the event, you know. It's not all about us banging your head against the pyramid stage. <laughs> Other things are going on there that are really important. That's really important to me. And uh, 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 Bill's really dedicated to He's so enthusiastic. Uh, and his wife as well. No, they go flat out down there. Uh, uh, what was your question? Did I answer it? Yes, you did. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, actually, yeah. that kind of led on to a question from me. Um, it sounds yeah. like you think that the sort of political element of music festivals, especially Glastonbury, is, is really important. Um, yeah. But recently, uh, sorry to use another Beyonce example, some people criticised her, notably Piers Morgan, for politicising <coughs> her performance at uh, the Super Bowl. So do you think that it's important for musicians, I guess, in that hippie oh, thread to continue to kind of... Oh, oh good on her. Mm. She has a go at it. I think that's marvellous. I know it's going to offend a few people, isn't it? But you can't make change without offending people, can you? No. If you go with a swim all the way along the line, there's really you don't get anywhere. <coughs> no. And no good on her. I think that's really good that she had a go at that. I think fantastic. I agree. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, another question. Uh, gentlemen, just back there. So obviously Glastonbury is so huge that it must be thousands of organisers, you know, every year. So what do you do? Like, do you pick pet projects? <laughs> I'm not saying you don't do anything, but 
you know, you... What's your question? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not the what music thing. What pi- like pies do you stick your fingers in every year to get, you know, decisions through? What, what do you decide on? Well, what well I've got 12 people th- actually booking bands, you know. Uh, and uh, and I'm, I mean, the selection this year amazing, isn't it? Have you seen the full lineup? <laughs> <laughs> it's bloody amazing, really, quite honestly. They're right across the board there, though. How about Underworld? Do you like Underworld? Uh, yeah? Underworld. You don't know them. <laughs> How about the Foles from Oxford? The Foles are from Oxford, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, how about Radiohead? Do you like Radiohead? Yeah, they're good, aren't they? <laughs> uh, Disclosure and Scout Club. I chose three of the new bands here. But, but um, and Radiohead must be due for another crack at it. Uh, oh, they played it a few times, but, but they're so good. Um, so I got 12 people. And uh, my daughter and her husband, because she married a music man rather than a farmer. <laughs> uh, can you blame her, really? Uh, and, uh, and so a pair of them are really, really... C- uh, they're leading up the programming of all the other people that are booking. Uh, but there are 26 stages, and they've all got their own management structure there. So they choose their own music. And and um, uh, 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 um, so the Avalon Field, for instance, is run by the time who runs Cambridge. Um, Eddie, who... He puts marvellous stuff in the Avalon Field. Have you, have you been before? You've been to the yeah. festival? Yeah, yeah. Do you like the Avalon Field? Yeah, I didn't go much. But Not too fussed about it. <laughs> <laughs> what? A bit of skew for my taste. Yeah, no, it's lovely. On Sunday afternoon, you won't be there down there. Um, there's a whole range of... Um, Paul Charles has, does the acoustic stage. And that's pretty good up there. Do you like that? Uh, yeah, it's a great place to go, actually. Um, there's a whole range of stuff. And Malcolm, in the Bristol crowd, they do all the dance village. I mean, that's huge. That's very noisy down there. Silver Haze. Yeah, what? Silver Haze. The Silver Haze, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's the name of the field, actually. Yeah, yeah. I uh, but I changed the name a couple of years ago. But yeah. what? I have work on it. So but do you? What, you were with Malcolm and Co? Um, yeah, we're Oh, Bruce Lou, yeah. Oh, great, lovely. Yeah. yeah, lovely. I mean, that's um, like a whole range of music. We've got every single conceivable thing. I, I mean, even our Kung Punk was coming back from, from wherever he was, um, um, playing on the acoustic stage. And uh, there's a whole range of stuff. It's, no, I think we do a good job, yeah, with the music selection. I think I, that's part of what we do, isn't it, really? Uh, but my favourite thing is really the nightlife, actually. I don't Shangri-La and the Bull Ring and the Common and, uh, and um, um, the Unfair Ground was actually voted by the Guardian Arts Correspondent as being the best artistic show in the whole of the UK last year. That's pretty good. But yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, and they're all travellers that are running that too, you know. But they're the ones that uh, jumped the fence in, in 1985. <laughs> so they're still around, you see. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Thank you for that question. Mm-hmm. Any more? Um, the gentleman here at the front. Here at the front, Madam. Um, so I believe you served in the m- Merchant Marine for a couple of years before returning to your father's farm. So yeah. I was just wondering if you ever feel nostalgic for your time at sea? <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> 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 oh my God, I felt all about that. <laughs> um, Unicastle Shipping Company I sailed with, but um, uh, and um, I'm mean, doing national service. Um, that was, I w- I would have been a seven-year course, you see, instead of two years in the army. But um, but I tended to do it as a career because I had an uncle who was in, who was in, in the Australian Navy uh, and he's a handsome bloke and his, his picture was on the piano when my mother played the piano and, and things. So this picture of this bloke, I thought, God, he's a good-looking chap. Uh, and can they do what he did, you see? So that's why I went to sea. 
Uh, and and I mean, unfortunately, my father died when I was 19, and, and so I had to leave the, the, the launching of a new liner. Are you connected with the sea yourself? Not, not Is your dad involved with it or something? No, I was just, I was just curious. <laughs> done a bit of, done <laughs> <laughs> I've done a but bit well, of sailing in my time. But I mean, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's a very, very glamorous life. Lovely, lovely girls and everything. But, uh, um, <laughs> but I was only 15, 16, 17, 18, I'm out. Uh, and uh, so, so I had to leave all, all of that uh, and come home. But the thing is, I was actually caught up, you see, because I hadn't finished my time, you see. And so, so I went before a tribunal, and, uh, and my father died by then. I was running this whole farm and doing it all myself. And um, uh, uh, so they wouldn't let me off the army. So, so, you, so uh, as you go, finish your time in the coal mines in order to finish up. Uh, so I went down the coal mines, and when I was 19, I worked on the coal face. Can, can you believe it? Uh, and, uh, and the, uh, but the wages from the coal mining actually s virtually saved my farm. Uh, um, this is because I had to give up the sea career that you spoke of. No, I loved it though. It was it, 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 it a fantastic life. It was really lovely actually. Uh, I, 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 I certainly missed it at the time, but. Um, I was either that or lose the farm, so I had to come home. Uh, and then I had to work in the in the coal field for two and a half years uh, uh, before they cancelled out my national service. Uh, and uh, so it was hard work. It's all that hard work that led to the festival, though, you see. Be be because I was grinding away, I thought, well, what's this life all about? Mm -hmm. It's not all about working. A milking cow, working on the coal face and getting home and milking late at night, early in the morning. And I'm doing both jobs, you see. You know, I was completely knackered, really. So that's where the, I fell in love with Jean and then went off to Balsby. So it's so all sort of part of the history because <laughs> that's why I wanted to change my life, really, because it was so tough. It's fascinating. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, so I was just going to ask, there's so many different festivals that people can go to, Bestival, Leeds, Isle of Wight. Why is Glastonbury special? Is it the history? I don't the know politics? what it is. <laughs> you tell me, I've got no idea. <laughs> I mean, I've been working on it all my life for 46 years. Uh, and uh, we, we, I mean, it's grown really from its roots all the time. It keeps changing from its roots. So it's not a top-down thing. Uh, but those other shows are controlled up by Live Nation or AG or, or Meanfield or whatever, you know what I mean? It's not the same. So do you think that's why Glastonbury is so special? Yeah, because that's why it's so different. To it. That's why it's so different, yeah. I mean, these kids that came down in 85, you know, the, the Stonehenge mob, you know, were, <laughs> and most people would have said, oh, what a waste of time, but in fact, there's a lot of talent there. And it's, it, so that they mixed in with what we were doing, you know, and they made it better. And, and it's just changing all the time, but it's bottom up, really. That's why it's so different. And it's changing a little bit every year. It changed. Have you been? I haven't, no. I've never, never managed been. to get tickets. Have you never been? No. I've Have been you to tried to, to come? Yeah, every year, and I never managed to get tickets. Oh, <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> it yeah. Is. Have you been to the others then? Yeah, but Leeds and Bestival and some others. Uh, yeah. Oh uh, um, no, we are very different to what they do. That's why I, I can't really explain it apart from that. Really, I don't know why we do it as differently to them, but we do. We all love doing it. We got about thirty thousand people working on the events. I mean, they're all dedicated and everything. Yeah, there's so much energy goes into it. There's a real passion and energy that's second to none. You won't get that anywhere else. And not in the world, no. Uh, I, I, and I went to San Francisco a few weeks ago and picked up the best festival in the world for the twelfth time uh, from an American poll style that's a voted. F I mean, people vote on the website for it, you know. And in Chapri does Coachella, who's also doing very well at the moment, also Lollapalooza. They said 
they got all their ideas from us, you know, when they came over. And, and so it's just going everywhere. <coughs> it's great, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks for the question. Next uh, question. I hope you get a ticket one, oh. one day. <laughs> Someone yeah. just there. Well <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you had to choose between the music and the milk, uh, which would you choose? Uh, well, <laughs> that's a, diffi <laughs> it's a difficult question, now, actually, because the farm's been around for such a long time. And my great-grandfather moved <coughs> into the farm in, in, in 1860. And, uh, and, and um, I, I do really love keeping, keeping the farm going. Uh, um, but I hate to ditch the farm. <laughs> Is that the answer to your question? I think the answer was milk. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, I think we've got time for just one or two more. Um, yeah. like there's a gentleman just there in the blue. Hi, so coming from Bristol, it's kind of nice to see different atmospheres at gigs that I go to across, you know, throughout the week. So yeah. my question to you, it's already sort of been asked, but do you get to go undercover to many other festivals? And if so, what's your favourite vibe? Yeah, not really. No, I don't really. I don't usually, not anymore. I mean, I used to go to Elephant Fair years ago down in Cornwall. You know, do you remember Elephant Fair? <coughs> no, no, no. Um, that was a bit novel, but to that didn't succeed either, you see. Um, not really. And now we, um, I think uh, we're leading the whole thing really. <laughs> and uh, and uh, my folk, people really that are working with me know what, what they're all doing. You, that whole Bristol crowd are amazing. And the massive attack crowd and all, all that lot, you know, th they got so much energy and, and, and they're so keen, you know, to put so much work into it. Oh, I can't imagine I'll be going to a festival this year. I, don't, uh, I can't think. Actually, I went to Ziggit in, in, uh, two years ago in the year off I had. I went to Ziggit and they were so kind to us. They put us up in a great, fantastic hotel looking over the, over, looking over the Danube and everything. Um, um, it's a great event to see how other people do it, but it wasn't what we do, you know. And it was different. But uh, they're so kind and, uh, and so nice to us. Uh, but I didn't learn anything from it, really, to be honest. No. <laughs> 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 and one last yeah. question. The gentleman there in the glasses. Right, so if, you, if it was completely up to you and money wasn't an issue, would you remove the fence at Glastonbury and make it completely open to <laughs> God, yeah. Uh, I tried that in 1985. <laughs> 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 no, it was a bit dangerous, actually. I mean, when we got to the 90s, it got a bit dangerous. I mean, there were too many people, and and it was dangerous. So, so I was convinced of that, and uh, and s so we came up with the fence idea. And it did actually work. Uh, and and uh, as Joe Strummer, bless his heart, uh, uh, campaigned, for the fence, you know, to keep the fence there. And he did a wonderful job before he died, you know, the campaign to say the fence was necessary, it wasn't horrible, it was necessary for the future of the event. And so he did a campaign right across the country and it did work. You know. I mean, very few people came without a ticket at the end of the 90s and, uh, and, he, uh, and it did work. No, we can't possibly do it without a fence. It's so dangerous. And two million people all arriving at once. <laughs> My God, no, it, it wouldn't work. Because we're too popular now for that anyway. Uh, uh, but through the 80s, through the 70s and 80s, it was okay, you know, because I mean, we, we weren't as popular then as we are now, nothing like. And it's getting more popular for some reason. I, I don't quite know why, but it is. <laughs> and numbers are getting higher. And um, I thought the TV maybe popularised it a little bit. Uh, but people just want to come, which is fantastic for me and for Emily. You know, we, we're so, I mean, we're so lucky, really, to have that market, really. And we haven't spent any money on it. But I'm not on publicity or anything, you know. We're the third brand with, uh, um, Nike was actually fourth brand and, and, and the most recognised brands in the world. Uh, and, and Nike has spent billions on their branding. 
And yet we're thrilled without even trying. <laughs> Isn't that extraordinary? It, it really is extraordinary. Yeah. So people like what we do, and I'm so grateful, really. It's fantastic. You couldn't really make it up, could you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sadly, I think that's all we've got time for today. So if everybody could please join me in thanking uh, Michael for... <laughs>